Welcome back to Marta on the Move. In this very busy episode, we visit Tom Price, Karajini National Park, Steep Point, Monkey Mire, Kalbarri National Park, and the Pinnacles. So we've made it to Karajini National Park. Karajini! I'm gonna stay here for a night or two and do all of the walks and a couple of the gorges that are still open in the National Park over the next couple of days before the weather gets too hot again. Should be good. And we're off to Karajini, the first gorge. Dahl's Gorge. Nice easy one, this one, to start with. We walk mm, 100 metres. Yeah, pretty spooky. Let's go. It's nice and easy here, yeah, used to this. All nice stairs and very flat walking. Makes it nice and easy. Already halfway down in, pretty cool. Just talking about the layers, they're amazing. Like some are flat, some are twisted. It's just amazing. All right, so this one's Circle Pool, but it's actually closed because they've had a landslide. But she's a long way down. It's nice down there, and you can't actually go down. Pretty cool, long way down. And over here, you can see all the orangey colour, not red, is a landslide. And it's gone right to the water, so it's been huge. Yeah, crazy. Mother Nature. Nature, yeah. We're in Karajini. gonna blow out the caravan filter. So uh, this is tonight's camp just outside of Tom Price. An available spot. Spin around here. And out the back here. Look at that. Awesome. So we're at Tom Price. That's what we camped in under. Last night, Magic Mountain. Not real easy. Pretty cool. Coming out of camp from uh, Tom Price this morning. It was nice and quiet last night. It was beautiful. It's a bit cool this morning. We're debating whether to put a jumper on for the first time in months and months. But I don't think we will. I think we'll push through because it's going to warm up. But yeah, the mountains are unreal around us.
Okay, so welcome to Tom Price Mine. Now this is a 24 seven day a week working mine. So those tires would just about cover our, our windows. And it is because the workings of the mine, the mine actually goes for 13 kilometers in length and um, they actually use it as a thoroughfare. Tom Price at the mine today. Then his little working lady. <laughs> China and Japan are our biggest uh, customers. You can hear how loud it would be. This is where they load uh, lump. It's on our way to Hammersley Gorge. Have a look, it's uh, open again now from the fire, so it's good. But, uh, she's a bit dusty and a bit red. But just add to our kilometres of dirt we've done. Down through. Yeah. 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 Hammersley Gorge. Pretty. 
and the rock formation. Incredible. It's just all twisted. Incredible. Just hope we don't meet anything because she's pretty narrow. At least it's done. <laughs> Back too soon. We're back to dirt. Not a one way in bridges yet. So it's not going to do it justice, but have a look at this view. Unbelievable, the mountain range. And there's all dust. All dust in the distance, and I reckon they're blasted. Because there's that much at the mine. Yeah, incredible. Now here comes a car. Putting up a dust cloud. This is the road we're going along. Ooh! Amazing, all the white out there. Pretty cool country. Rough road. We're on a track out the back of nowhere from Karajini heading into Karatha. And the Sturt Desert Peas are everywhere along the side of the road. how hard we had to hunt for them when we did our New South Wales trip and I'm on some back road out at back of WA and there are stacks of them so many beautiful little peas everywhere yeah, so this is the country we've been traveling through for the last couple of hours it's just beautiful the white ants this magic Oh, still going well. Not rough. Middle of nowhere. There's all little purple flowers. Crazy. So we've just been travelling along. We just pulled up to pump up the tyres because we hit the tar. And the train going. They are just massive. They just keep going. They're so long. So long. I'll record it and I'll speed it up. So here comes the end. So this video is two minutes thirty to go past. Two and a half minutes. Crazy. So this is a six percent gradient. The view should be good. That is cool. Very majestic. Majestic. Vast. Vast. It's a big country. Sounds 
trains. And the scenery is just amazing. Can't get over it. There's no trees hardly. It's weird. Must be really hard ground. Yeah. Plenty of spin effects. These trains. Incredible. Dampier. Now, and these are the ships being loaded with the iron ore seen on the trains yesterday. We're sitting in the car because it's blowing. Like, blowing, blowing. South Australia type wind. We're at Dampier. This is Red Dog based on the movie. Pretty cool. We're just driving from Dampier into Karatha and in front of us is all of the uh, salt farms that Rio Tinto owned. Poor little van, she's so red everywhere. I don't know if it'll ever be clean. We're at Onslow tonight. We're just walking out on the boardwalk, watching the sunset. Awesome. Come our way, beach on the road. Alright, so we're at Onslow, and this is Sunset Beach, or Back Beach. For salt, by the looks of it. Yeah, very nice. We'll come out here for sunset tonight and have a look. So we've come out from Onslow to Old Onslow. Um, we are currently standing in the lockup at the police station. Across from there is like living quarters and the courthouse. Um, in 1893, Old Onslow was established, but then in 1925, it relocated to where Onslow now stands because the jetty um, just couldn't do the job. What we're standing in right now is where the prisoners used to come and have free time. And up at the top of the walls here is all like shards of broken glass to deter them from escaping, like old day barbed wire and down here is the shackles that they used to be all tied to. So we're at Onslow. This is Onslow salt production. It all goes overseas and used for chlorine and caustic soda and stuff. There's a ship in the bay being loaded. We'll show you that in a second. But yeah, amazing how much salt there is. So uh, this is salt coming in from the evaporation ponds. I have never seen so much salt. A huge truck. Like huge. I'd say he's going to go up here and tip. Tip it, which will go down and put in the stockpile yeah so the truck looks like he's gonna dump here in a second he stop now Oh yeah, she's falling out the bottom. That's cool. Falling out the bottom, and she got a long conveyor belt and end up over here in the stockpile. That's cool. Yeah, so this is the salt on the conveyor belt going to the ship. Pretty cool. Yeah, 
yeah, so this is on's low town. So there's units here, hotels. Exmouth. It's quite the place to be. Yardy Creek. It's a gorge and you spin round. And there's the ocean. Amazing. over the Ningaloo Reef at Cape Grand, uh, Range National Park near Exmouth. Um, the reef, you can see it's like, it's really windy today and it's breaking really hard over the reef out there. We can't even get in the water because it's just too rough and cold out there today. We were hoping to snorkel, but it's not gonna happen. And then behind you is the Cape Range of the National Park and that goes for about 50 k's. A few gorges in there that we might look at tomorrow. Yeah, it's a nice national park. It's just really windy. So this is the oyster stacks where you snorkel. We're not going in because it's blowing a gale. It's pretty, it's just not inviting. The waves are huge. They're just this guy's just walking through camp. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, here's another one walking through camp. Not real sure what's going on. What you're looking at right now is the US Naval Communications Station based at Exmouth. All of those antennas were built in 1963 and they communicate through a low level frequency um, to Australian, US and allied submarines. We're up at Flaming Head in Exmouth. Um, what you're looking at now is the lighthouse that was built in the early 1900s but it came obsolete when Tower Zero was built for the US Naval Communication Area and then uh, this area did see some activity during World War II 
um, and they did have a couple of guns up here and that's a radar post over there and you're also looking out at the Ningaloo Reef. Beach is so nice, the wind stopped. And it was like this all day, the last two days. It's now six o'clock. Last two days it's been blowing. But it's pretty specky now. Sunset at X Mouth around the reef side. Looks amazing. Best sunsets we've seen in a while. Pretty spooky. Good. So today we're back on the road. Left Exmouth. Still really windy. Uh, we're going to Coral Bay and then on to Carnarvon. Here he comes back from his snorkeling. How did you go? Cold. Cold. What did you see? Anything exciting? Fish. Lots of fish. Nothing else? No. Oh, you're so cold. <sighs> good morning or good afternoon, depends on where you are in the country. We come to you today from the beginning of the Tropic of Capricorn. We just worked it out that we hit the Tropic of Capricorn in Longreach in July and we have spent 99 days above the Tropic of Capricorn. Pretty cool, 99 days. Um, so we're at Point Quabba right now. We've come out here to look at the blowholes and uh, a place called the aquarium where there's some really good snorkeling. There's not many people out here and it is windy as. From Carnarvon. Good morning. We're off to a market this morning. She's quite little town of the morning, early. We're going to have a little market. We're in Carnarvon and at the moment we're looking at all of the equipment they used for tracking the space mission Apollo when they landed on the moon. It's very interesting, all the old gizmos and watsets and old computers that used to scream and wail at you as they connected, if you remember. It's a really good museum. They've got a bit of everything. Even an old tilly.
Boston counting, T minus three. We are go with all elements of the mission at this time. We're on an automatic sequence as the master computer supervises hundreds of events occurring over these last few minutes. T minus two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. Take the off. members of the launch team here in the control center monitoring. Welcome to Shark Bay, home of the Stromatolites and Monkey Meyer. We're at Hamlin Pool today and out there is what's left of the jetty that used to go out over the stromatolites and the microbial mats that are living organisms and they began life here on earth like 15 trillion million 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 years ago and apparently in this bay um, they're one of the lucky ones where a special cockle uh, likes to reproduce it's very salty water and the whole beach is just cockle shells about 10 meters deep they've compacted so much over time that they've actually um, cut them up and made them into blocks to build their houses out of we're in the shell quarry which has significant historical value to the area this is where they used to come and cut out the blocks of these compacted shells or coquina and make their special um, buildings such as churches and council halls etc they only use it now if they're repairing any of these buildings and hopefully we'll see some of, some of them in Denham Alright so we're on our way out to Steep Point today the most westerly point of the mainland should be good with a few hundred k's of dirt hasn't been too bad so far We've got some sandy tracks to do apparently as well. So there we go. Alright, so we just pulled up to make cover on our way out to Steep Point. So we spin round and check this view out. It's just incredible. We're in the middle of nowhere. couple hundred k's of dirt but yeah pretty specky the road out to steep point has become very very soft sand quite narrow and it's really rutted and the poor old cruiser she's having a bit of trouble getting up there so now Mark's putting the tyres down just a little bit more I recommend 20 psi or lower, but I guess Mark will go down that far. I'm not sure. She's a big fat girl. She needs a bit of tire pressure. We've come that far. We'll see how we go. We've got about 38 k's of this. Could take us a couple of hours. Oh, we're crawling our way through sand tracks now, which is pretty slow. Slow going. Oh, it's all sand dunes. Wow. Have a go at the sand dunes. It's just awesome. Alright, so we're getting there, but how cool is this? Down on the beach. We have made it 
to State Point this morning. We are the most westerly people at 5 to 11 on the 16th of October on mainland Australia. Yes! <laughs> and it's windy. That's number four. Been south, east, north and now west. Woo! <laughs> Have a go at this coastline. Bloody awesome. Massive waves coming in. Oh, that's cool. There's like blowholes down in the rocks. So uh, this is a natural bridge in the rock. She's pretty rugged coastline. And the water's all coming up through there every now and then. Quite amazing coastline. And of course, now yeah, we've got the water. camera going. She's not coming through. Working our way along the coast, coast to Thunder Bay. We're about 13 k's of this. But it's been uh, very pretty. Looking out at the ocean, the cliffs. Pretty specky. Alright, so we're at uh, Dicko's Lookout now. You look out the ocean and you spin around. Pretty incredible. Won't do it justice on the video. Come around the sand dunes we drove up through to get here. Amazing, right around. There's Danny. Back out down the coast again. Incredible coastline. Alright, so we've made it to Thunder Bay. This is Thunder Bay. Tides out I think by the looks of the water. The ocean's quite calm today. We've just been to the blowholes, they weren't blowing because they're not waves. Pretty cool. Sandy lumpy tracks. Super soft. Then you get to the top and you get the, that sort of view. Look at that, it's out there. I'll stop in a minute, we'll stop the rocket. <laughs> Oh, wow. 
last couple of nights. Been all right. Been around green lawns. Look at this dust. It never oh. happened. It's not dust, it's actually chocolate. It never happened. <laughs> chocolate, darling, chocolate. I'm just checking out the car. They just rock on <laughs> into care. <laughs> Danny's backed out of a chair. He's just wandering through. Just checking. It's all clean here. Moving on. <laughs> we're at Monkey Mire and we're watching the dolphins. Oh, Trying to. some dolphins. Yay. They're just cruising waiting. They're gonna chill don't they? So that's here, here is the jetty, and there's this picture lay here. Each dolphin experience is different, every day is unique. Some mornings we've had better help us out with the dolphin teeth in the morning and concentrate with the monkey mire research and some of the other little jobs we have.
At Monkey Mire Beach today and we've been watching the dolphins all morning. We've had three experiences where they've come in and um, they've been fed. Two in particular, one called Piccolo and one called Kia. Um, the experience is very regulated now but it's because the calf mortality rate got so high back in the 80s where they were being fed all the time and became dependent on being fed by humans um, and the calves weren't getting any food so now um, the mortality rate has um, improved and the calves are surviving a lot better and the mummy dolphins are teaching their calves how to hunt and um, fend for themselves a lot better but we're so lucky we've got an absolutely sterling day to be seeing them and they're so friendly and they come up so close they're so beautiful it has been simply the best morning bucket list big tick We're at Shell Beach this morning, near Denham, near Monkey Moyle. Um, what you're looking at is like mounds and mounds and rows of cockle shells that have been laid down over the 24,000 trillion million years. Um, the water here is very, very salty and not a lot of stuff can live in it, but these cockle shells sure do. And uh, yeah, they get pushed up here by the tides, but they don't get washed back out because the tides can't get back out to the ocean, hence why it's so salty. It's really interesting. And it's really white up there. Look at that. The water is a beautiful colour, but apparently you float really well in it because it's got such high salinity. Amazing. We're in Kalbarri National Park and there's all these white plants and yellow fluffy things on the side of the road, I don't know if you can see them or not, but they're quite pretty, we just go for as far as you can see. We've made it to Kalbarri National Park and right now we're at Hawkshead Lookout looking down onto the Murchison River. This is the Ross Graham lookout with just another aspect of the Murchison River and all its gorges. So we're about to walk out onto the Skywalk at Calberry National Park. It's very exciting. We're going to have a big look at the awesome gorge from up in the air. Oh wow, that's pretty spectacular. Gotta say. Yep, that is amazing. Oh god, don't look down. Oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. We'll just walk over on this bit that's not so airy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's an amazing view of the river and the gorge. Amazing view. And this is the view from the second Skywalk platform. 
just gives you a little bit more perspective on how big the land is. It is massive. So we are at the Z bend called that because of the fractures in the gorge that make it form that sort of shape. Right down in front of us you can see there's a particularly straight fracture and up on the cliff sides you can see all the layers of sediment and silt. About 400 million years ago, the landscape for Kalbarri National Park was forming and the only life forms back then were arthropods. And these are apparently the tracks of one of the biggest arthropod that lived around here. It became amphibious, amphibious and it would come out of the water. Good morning. So this morning we're on the coastal side of Kalbarri National Park and we are looking at Island Rock, which is nestled right next to Castle Cove. We've just walked around the other side of Castle Cove and now we're looking at a natural bridge formation. This is Red Bluff. We are looking over the Cowberry Township. The Reds in the rock are because they're so rich in iron. That's science with Danny. <laughs> so we're at the memorial at Geraldton for HMS Sydney 2 and this is looking out over the beaches and out over the town and port of Geraldton. I'll go for a little drive on the beaches soon, have a look. But yeah, it looks pretty nice. Look where we are. I'm just so excited. Look at all the good things. I just pulled up at uh, Port Denison. South Australia oysters and some Alright, so we just pulled up at Lehman. Have a spot of lunch next to the ocean. We'll set up in the boat ramp. Wood wood. Prawns and oysters should be good. We've just come down to the coastline near Savants. It's pretty rugged. There's lots of rocks and um, landforms out there making the sea break big but it's beautiful we're at Tewitt Reserve which is near Cervantes we've been to see the stromatolites in the national park and tomorrow we're heading on down to the pinnacles and this is where we're staying tonight very quiet very peaceful we're one of two people here Alright, so here we go. We're in the Pinnacles, into the Desert Drive. We'll have science with Denny later, we'll work out how they formed. Why? Good morning, we are exploring the pinnacles today. The only thing I can tell you about them at this point is that they are limestone. Mark has a theory that this used to be the ocean floor and that once, it's, um, once the ocean sort of went away and it ended up being barren and desert and everything, the sand sort of come in around them 
and it's just left them all standing up upright and they've just weathered away over time. When we get to the Discovery Centre, I'll let you know exactly how they were formed, but they are weird and awesome. And the other thing I want to say is happy birthday, Aaron, Zach and Cooper. So we've been to Aldi and we've bought the Melting Moments. How are they? Awesome. Gee, we've missed Aldi. All sorts of shapes, sizes. Crazy. The sand is so yellow. But the sand on the beaches was all uh, white. So that's different. Weird. So we're in the pinnacles today. And it's starting to rain. Cool. Haven't seen any rain for ages. Uh, this is camp last night at New Norcia. Very good. And he's just doing the bid run. Good morning and welcome to New Norcia, Australia's only monastic town. So we're just going to take a little walk up the main street and give you a bit of a look around at all of the old buildings and we're just reading all of the history and in about half an hour or so we're going for a tour inside so that'll be really interesting and we'll take you with us. Henley Brook in the Swan Valley camp for the next four nights. It's a hip camp, not a bad spot in the, in the paddock with the horses. Oh, pizza out of the air fryer. Hey, awesome.